The CDC has just released guidelines about reopening America during this time of global pandemic. How, why, when? If you wanna know the answer to those questions, stay tuned. I'm Dr. Travis Bantz, a cardiologist, and want to welcome you to one of the first episodes of Dr. Travis Bantz, The Lifestyle MD. That said, I wish I could be talking to you about fitness, health, wellness, just overall well-being. However, I think it's important that we discuss some of the more pertinent issues that are going on right now. If you haven't been living under a rock or somewhere else, you know that the global pandemic has changed uh, how we live, what we do, what we deem is important. And for many of us, it has created significant hardship. That said, the Centers for Disease Control of the CDC has just released new guidelines on how to reopen America. But the question that many of us have is, how does that relate to me? What does that mean in terms of my business, my group, my organization? For parents, what does it mean? Can I get my kids back to school? I'll summarize those guidelines. Again, it's about 22 pages, but we'll go through the key pertinent points that pertain to most folks, not necessarily specific to businesses, but uh, communal organizations, churches, sports teams, various things like that. They've outlined a very instructive plan. Now, I take that plan and I truncate it or shorten it a little bit and make it a little bit easier in terms of implementation. In any case, I hope that you'll be able to gain something from this discussion. Let's hop right in. I've come up with a strategy, so to speak, called the 3R approach. Risk, reach, reintegration. So reintegration is a strategy where you integrate those people after you've assessed risk, identified that you can communicate with them effectively. But there are four P's to true reintegration. The four P's. The first P is partition or separate. This is where you use your data to say who should come back. Once you identified which patients in your group or organization are at risk, then you can accurately say that it is safe for those people to come back. In many cases, some of the ways that you create these areas of separation or partition, potentially by age, risk factors, but again, we want to make sure that we make patient privacy a priority. The next P to the reintegration process is practice, meaning many of the behaviors, whether they be social distancing, wearing a mask, hand washing, hand sanitation, uh, various things about cleaning the area. Those practices need to stay in place. Now, communicate that with the individuals prior to their return back to your facility or group. The next P is one that we are all very familiar with. It is placement. We already know from our assessment above who's at risk. We already know that they're going to maintain those same practices. But when they come back into your facility, depending on spacing, how will you attain the at least six feet? In any case, where you place these individuals uh, should help in determining uh, how to separate folks in a way that keeps everyone safe. Now, the last P is the one that, again, reflects the CDC's approach. This P is phases, right? So what phases do you use to reintegrate? Now, as I mentioned, the CDC uses three phases, phase one, phase two, phase three, based on, again, those six gating criteria. This is a lot more simple. We have phases from zero to four, zero being our current state, where if you're a place that could not meet or could not congregate, you'd be in zero phase. Some places reduce down to only essential personnel during zero phase. But in any case, zero phase uh, is a phase where you optimize communication, risk assessment, as well as the utilization of other structures, mask, hand washing, making those be behaviors that you can easily disseminate amongst your group. The other important thing about zero phase, this is where you can refine your communication tools. Uh, a, a church that I have the ability to 
uh, work with um, utilizes an app that sends out the questionnaire weekly to parishioners to ensure that there have been no changes. If there have been changes, those individuals are encouraged to stay home. We've talked about phase zero, so now about phase one. Phase one is an enhancement of phase zero, where you can increase those numbers, optimize your communication strategies, be them digital, probably not paper, but if so, uh, optimize those strategies and now focus on where you're going to place those individuals because you've increased the numbers based on local, regional, or state jurisdiction rules. Now, phase two, this is where it gets a little different, right? In phase two, your numbers increase even more, but now this is where it is paramount that you enhance your risk surveillance strategies. Remember, making sure to keep private patient information or parishioner information or gym member information, those basic questions. And again, I'll show them here that inquire just generally, yes or no. If individuals answer yes to any of these questions, again, we would encourage them to follow up with their primary care doctor or uh, not participate or congregate uh, because we are unsure of what their risk status is. Now we can move on to phase three. Now at phase three, what happens is you review the local rules. By this point, you've allowed some time to see that you've enhanced communication strategies. You've ensured that your risk population has been identified. You've set up placing, you've done all those things to make sure that you're ready to go. But now you review the rules because what is inevitable is that data is gonna come back that may force us to shift gears or to change. The one thing that you didn't see with these phases is me saying in two weeks, in three weeks, because at this point we really don't know. So let's assume that at phase three, you're at 75% of your total. Now, again, there's no timeline, timeline when this would occur, but in any case, you have to reevaluate your ability to do so. Now here you could potentially identify disease status of your inherent population. Meaning if you have a group of individuals and you were in phase two and three people were positive, that might be an indicator that you stay at phase two or, or reduce uh, some of the risk. Again, not blaming, but looking at ways to keep yourself safe. Finally, that leaves us with phase four or normal status. And, and I almost use air quotes there to identify normal status. Meaning that I don't think we ever get back to truly what we would consider normal. But with the implementation of social distancing, hand washing strategies, masking potentially, are all strategies to help us reintegrate and to resume our activities with some sense of safety. Now, whenever you go to reintegrate, whenever you move into these spaces, understand, ask yourself, am I reducing the risk just for me? and I'm gonna use some bad English here, or for we. Remember, the role of the asymptomatic carrier is much more prominent than we know, meaning someone that might not manifest dis symptoms, understanding that there's a latency period or where you don't have symptoms for at least you know, 14 days in some cases, but you can touch the lives positively or negatively of those who are around you, especially those at high risk. Now, remember, Understanding how to transition is important. The CDC outlines a great guideline for us. Again, the three R's, risk assessment, your ability to reach individuals, and then strategies toward reintegration. Reintegration strategies, the four P's, right? Where you partition, you utilize various practices to reduce risk, you look at placement, and then you go through your phases. All right. Thank you for listening. And again, I hope that you would be interested in more discussions like this. I'll be giving weekly discussions on health, fitness, wellness, and overall cardiovascular health. That said, click the subscribe button or also check out the website that is linked in the comments below. But in any case, stay safe and we'll see you soon.